trigonometry is usually defined using the right angled triangle definition but there is another definition it's called the arbitrary angle definition and this is how it works we can take an axis a vertical axis and a horizontal axis usually we don't call them any name x-axis or y-axis but just for simplicity let's call this x-axis and let's call this the y-axis then when x-axis is positive and y-axis is positive we consider this to be the first quadrant in terms of degree so 0 degree to 90 degree is the first quadrant now in terms of x-axis you would notice that if we have a point x y then this point x would be positive and y would be positive so in the first quadrant both x and y is positive from 90 degree to 180 degree we call this the second quadrant here x is negative but y is positive then from 180 degree to 270 degree we call this the third quadrant here x is negative and y is negative from 270 degree to 360 degree we call this the fourth quadrant and in the fourth quadrant x is positive y is negative now if you consider sine the definition of sine from the right angle triangle definition we know that sine of any angle theta is opposite by hypotenuse if we draw an angle like this this would look like that right angle triangle and if this is theta then the opposite would be this length and that would be the y-axis so this would be y-axis remember here y-axis is positive then the hypotenuse would be this and hypotenuse would always be positive because it is not on the x or y axis so that would be positive let me call this the hypotenuse let me call this r so sine theta would be positive similarly if i put cos theta here cos theta would be adjacent which is x x is positive divided by this hypotenuse r that would be positive so the value of cos theta and sine theta both would be positive if we have tan theta tan theta if you remember is sine theta by cos theta that means both are positive opposite by adjacent opposite is y adjacent x so in the first quadrant if we take the right angle triangle something like that we will we can say that everything here is positive so we can say all positive so here all is positive sine cos tan all positive by this logic uh, we can say that in the second quadrant if there was an angle here in the second quadrant then only sine would be positive because here sine is opposite by adjust opposite by hypotenuse so only sine would be positive so we call this sine positive in the third quadrant similarly only tan would be positive so we call this tan positive and in the fourth quadrant only cos would be positive by that logic so this is not an actual definition of a right angle triangle here this angle can have any value for example if you think of a right angle triangle a right angle triangle is an acute angle the theta that we are talking about is an acute angle less than 90 degree but when we talk about this quadrant if you consider this to be the angle suppose 60 degree and if you take this to be 60 degree and if you take a complete revolution 360 degree and come back to 60 degree so the angle sine 60 degree and the angle sine of 60 degree plus 360 degree would be the same value if you take out your calculator you will see both sine 60 and this value which is 420 of sine they have the same value but if you go two more revol uh, revolutions one two and then you come here this doesn't happen in real world they are arbitrary angles so if you do sine 60 plus 2 into 360 which is 720 you would say they have the same angle let me show you this so sine 60 is root 3 by 2 0 
if we take sine 420 same value 0 0.866 root 3 by 2 then if we have sine 720 plus 60 is 780 it has the same value that means when we talk about arbitrary constants it doesn't really refer to a triangle because a triangle cannot have uh, 420 degrees uh, 780 degrees it refers to an arbitrary angle and it is this arbitrary angle that we are talking about so we can call this to be the definition of trigonometric ratio of the arbitrary angle definition so arbitrary okay if you remember when we talk about the common angles these are the common angles when we have this right angle triangle definition 45 degree we have sine 45 degree cos 45 degree tan 45 degree in degrees it is 45 degree in radian it is pi by 4 then we have another triangle 30 degree 60 degree triangle in that case we have 60 degree sine 60 degrees root 3 by 2 opposite by hypotenuse and on and on and this is the 30 degree and then we have this value where we have 0 degree 90 degree 180 degree 270 degree 360 degree sine 0 degrees 0 sine 180 degrees also 0 sine 360 degrees also 0 that means in the same position they have the same value so this is a very important chart that needs to be memorized and or you could just remember these three pictures so this is the definition in terms of right angle triangles definition so remember when we talk about arbitrary angle definition it doesn't matter what it is sine of any angle plus any number of revolution times 360 degree would be the same value this goes for cos this goes for tan 360 degree or 2 pi in radian so sine 60 degree sine 420 degree sine 780 degree refers to the same position but since the angle is arbitrary we can keep on going and going and going and we can have the same position but the angle can keep on increasing so it is important to understand arbitrary angle definition refers to this this picture and we call this the first quadrant the second quadrant the third quadrant the fourth quadrant in the first quadrant sine cos tan all these things have positive values in the second quadrant only sine has a positive value denoted by this s but cos has negative value and tan has negative value if you think about in x-axis and y-axis then you can see why this is happening here in the third quadrant similarly only tan has positive value sine and cos has negative value in the fourth quadrant only cos has positive value sine and tan has negative value so you can remember this by remembering this acronym CAST cast or all students take chemistry or all silver tea cups whatever helps you to remember now when we talk about solving a trigonometric equation it is very very important in order to do that to understand these quadrants and in order to do that you have to understand we are not talking about a right angle triangle we're not talking about geometry we are talking an arbitrary angle that needs to be found from here first what is an equation and what does it mean to solve an equation an equation is uh, simply a relationship between an unknown quantity and a known quantity if someone says pick a number suppose the number is X and you're asked to multiply 2 with the number and then you're asked to add 4 to the number and if you say you got 10 then we can simply solve this equation and we will get 10 minus 4 which is 6 therefore if we divide this this would be 6 divided by 2 so the number was 3 this is called the root of the equation 
the root of the equation is that value that makes the equation true every value of x or any value of x will never make this true we can check it if you plug in x equals to 3 in this equation you will see that left hand side and right hand side would, would match 2 3 is a 6 6 plus 4 10 10 equals to 10 so when you solve an equation the root of that equation is that value which makes the equation true similarly when we have an equation like this sine x equals to 0 that means you have to find the value you cannot say any value of x would do because it won't there are certain values for which this equation will become true and if you take a look at the common angles you'll remember that uh, sine 0 happens at 0 degree it happens at 180 degree it also happens at 360 degree and you should have this memorized these are the common angles so in that case you can simply write x equals to 0 degree 180 degree or 360 degree if the question was cos x equals to 0 solve that cos x is 0 in 90 degree and 270 degree it is important to remember these two equations and for that reason we can just do this we don't have to worry about solving it you have to memorize it and you can write down the answer like this but most questions will not be sine x equals to 0 or cos x equals to 0 or sine x equals to 1 or cos x equals to 1 it would be sine theta equals to some other number let me call it a or cos theta equals to some number let me call it b or it can also be tan theta some number so in the C2 exam when you solve a trigonometric equation the question would be in these one of these basic form there are specific steps for solving these so let me go through the steps one by one suppose you have to solve this equation sine x equals to half the first thing that you have to understand that it's an arbitrary angle it's not a realistic right angle triangle angle it's an arbitrary angle so step one find the quadrant we know in the first quadrant everything is positive so sine x is positive here so it will lie in the first quadrant we also know that there is another quadrant where only sine is positive so it's the second quadrant remember c a s t c c a s t remember that so it would fall into two quadrants this is step number one step number two is to find the angle we call it the basic angle or the reference angle and the basic angle is always the absolute value that means if you have sine theta equals to a the basic angle would be sine inverse of a if it was sine theta equals to minus a even then the basic angle would be sine inverse of a regardless of whether the value is positive or whether the value is negative sine inverse would always be the absolute value meaning you ignore the sine and get the sine inverse so the basic angle would be sine inverse of half sine inverse of half it is 30 degree so we have the basic angle once you get the basic angle you put the basic angle on the horizontal line this is the quadrant this is the basic angle is always with the horizontal line the basic angle with the horizontal line the basic angle so this is what you do the basic angle would be with the horizontal line so we have to draw the quadrant here I didn't draw, draw the quadrant here every time you do the sum there has to be a quadrant here so the basic angle would be 30 degree and 30 degree next step 3 would be finding the angle themselves if the basic angle is in the first quadrant then the angle that you want to find itself is the basic angle so this angle corresponds to the basic angle so your angle theta equals to the basic angle and if it's in the second quadrant 
then your angle theta is 180 degree minus basic angle so 180 degree minus basic angle so both the sums that we have both the basic angle is first quadrant and second quadrant so x equals to so this is the first quadrant basic angle and x equals to this is the second quadrant that would be 180 minus basic angle which is 30 so that would be 150 so for 0 to 360 degree there would be two roots that makes this equation true one of it is 30 degree and the other is 150 degree now let's do another sum where we have sin x now this one let's have cos x cos x equals to 1 by square root 2 we need cos positive so first you take the quadrant c a s t so all positive this would be in the first quadrant and cos positive would be in the fourth quadrant so now we find the basic angle step 2 so cos inverse of 1 by square root 2 is going to be 45 degree so the basic angle would be with the horizontal line 45 degree and 45 degree so the first thing is going to be the first quadrant so this is same as the basic angle so this would be 45 degree so it's in the first quadrant the basic angle and the angle is the same and if you have in the fourth quadrant in that case the rule is let me write it down here if you have an angle in the fourth quadrant so the basic angle will be with the horizontal line in the third quadrant the basic angle would be again with the horizontal line so what about the other two quadrants if you have an angle in the third quadrant then the angle would be 180 degree plus basic angle if you have an angle in the fourth quadrant the angle would be 360 degree minus basic angle so these are the rules for finding the angle remember that in the fourth quadrant 360 degree minus basic angle that means this angle would be 360 degree minus 45 that would be 315 degree and that's the answer so the answer would be x equals to 45 degree x equals to 315 degree in the question they would always give the range of the root the range of the root would be give, given like this x is between 0 to 360 degree there can be an equal to here or if it's in radian it would be 0 to 2 pi whenever this is given and this will always be given you have to understand you have to select your answer if the answer is outside this range then you cannot write down the answer so you can say that there is another step the fourth step is choosing from the range so whenever they give you the range 0 to 360 degree and the final stage would be choosing the range remember step number one from the quadrant select the arbitrary angle C A S T where it falls step 2 is find the basic angle and remember in the basic angle in the basic angle you have to remember we take inverse of the absolute value if it's negative we take without any sign if it's positive we take without any sign after that we have to find the angle and that angle depends on what quadrant it falls the basic angle and if it falls in the first quadrant the basic angle is one of the angles if it falls in the second quadrant it would be 180 minus basic angle if it falls in the fourth quadrant third quadrant it would be 180 plus basic angle and on and on after the sum has been done then you choose the answer